What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with a review for The Real Housewives of Dallas. This is season four. This is episode three, and it's titled, Donde Esta Margarita? So, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into the video. So first, you guys, we're going to start out with Stephanie. So we see Stephanie. She's FaceTiming with Travis. And she's talking to Travis because Travis was supposed to meet with Deandra for this meeting that they were supposed to have about her company. Well, Deandra's not going to be able to make that meeting because Deandra had a hair emergency and her hair was orange and she didn't want to meet with Travis. And she had texted Stephanie at 1 a.m. in the morning. And I'm like, why would you text someone at 1 a.m. in the morning? That is not professional. You know, to text someone at 1 a.m. to cancel a meeting. And I like DeAndre, but I just, I didn't agree with that. And Travis didn't like that either. He was like, I hear emergency. Throw a DeAndre. DeAndre, my love, throw a cap on. Like, throw a cap on, throw a scarf on, throw something on. Like, no one has to know that you had a hair emergency. And even when you come in there, you can be like, oh, you know, you can tell him, like, you know, everything up here is not situated right. And I just came in, I wanted to, you know, uphold my appointment with you. I didn't want to waste your time, you know, because you could have had other things to do in your day. I don't want to waste your time. But no, she canceled it. And I was actually, like I said, I was just on Travis' side. So then next we see Stephanie with her life coach. And, you know, Stephanie is talking about how she doesn't feel like she's centered. And, you know, she talks about what happened last season when she admitted that she um, attempted to commit suicide. And she's talking about how she just feels anxious and then, you know, she says she's back on her antidepressants. Now, the thing that got me was the fact that Stephanie says she lacks self-confidence. And she's done so since she could, because she, the um, life coach asked her, so when you think this first, you know, first started happening? And she says back when she was in kindergarten. And I was just like, wow, man. Like, so a little four or five-year-old kid didn't have confidence in themselves and their looks like. Stephanie, to me, is absolutely beautiful and absolutely gorgeous. So I, it just kind of, it, 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 it knocked me back to, to see that she has these insecurities. And it's just like, wow. Like, hold, but I, 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 like I said, I love Stephanie. I think she's beautiful. I think she's gorgeous. Hold your head up, Stephanie. Don't let anybody tell you anything negative about yourself. And you always stay positive within yourself. And that, and I'm one to talk because there are some insecurities that I have about myself, but I've never, well, it's not a big insecurity. It's just a tad, a small insecurity, but an insecurity is an insecurity nonetheless. All right, so this video actually might be a little bit short because this wasn't really a much of, I mean, it was, a, it, it gave us something, but it didn't give us a lot. So we have Leanne next. So we see Leanne. Leanne has really not done anything in regards to her wedding which is seven weeks away and we see her with her wedding planner so they're going to look for her wedding dress and again she's seven weeks out like that's not a lot of time to i feel plan for a wedding and then you don't like i said you don't have a dress and she, as we saw she doesn't really have a budget for her dress because the, the um the girl who was designing her dress she's like so what about ten thousand dollars liam's like can't afford ten thousand dollars she said seven thousand can't afford 7000 either. So basically, what, you want something for free? And I'm not knocking people who want something for free. Not knocking it. Because I think Leanne could do a good bargaining chip. Like, you're on Real Housewives of Dallas. You could tell the designer, like, hey, you know, if you design my wedding dress, we're filming for season four of Real Housewives of Dallas. If you design this dress for me and we showcase it on TV, a lot of people are bound to ask me, Leanne, who designed your wedding dress? So that would give you free promotion on our show. But, you know, her wedding planner is like, you know, Leanne doesn't want to do stuff like that. If you ain't got the money to buy nothing nice, you got you to gotta come up with, you got to bargain and barter however you can. Like, come, you got to make it, you got to make it do what it do. You got to, you got to, you have to. Like, that's a part of life, bargaining and bartering. Not asking for something for free. But, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch your back type sh type of stuff, I feel. I feel. But even if I, were in, uh, if I were in Leanne's position, I would not have waited no damn seven, no seven weeks before my wedding to go try to look for a wedding dress. Like, that would be stressful as hell. Like, 
You you can you and she and Rich got engaged in two thousand and sixteen, I believe, or two thousand seventeen. One of those two. They've been engaged for a while. So when you got engaged, you should have started planning for your wedding dress at that point. But you know, some people procrastinate. We obviously see that Leanne is a procrastinator. So it, it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing against that. But I just think that if you don't have a lot of money to pay for, you know, if you don't have a lot of money for your dress. You should have started shopping a long ass time ago. Just my personal opinion. Uh, you know, but who am I? So then as we, she's getting ready to go on the trip with the girls to Mexico, we see her having a conversation with Rich. And they're talking about Deandra. And she's still kind of unsure about where she's going, where she is with Deandra. And Rich is just talking to her about forgiveness. With uh, You know, he, even though he hasn't gotten an apology, he's a forgiving person. And I like that. Like he's talking about the Christian way, which that is a Christian way to forgive and forget. Now, am I one to always forgive and forget? No. But he's a big person and I commend Rich for that. So we're actually just going to move on, you guys. This might not be long. Like, again, this episode just wasn't much for me. All right. Next, you guys, we got Deandra. So Deandra is talking to Jeremy. About this whole thing between uh, about this whole thing about um, Travis, and she's talking about how she doesn't feel like Travis is going to understand her hair emergency, and you know Jeremy's like, well, hell, I don't understand it either, and then he says, you know, he tells her, she's like, well, you, you know, she didn't know that um, that um, <clears throat> Travis knew nothing about it, but she said it's not Stephanie's fault, and you're right, it's not Stephanie's fault, it's actually your fault. You don't text someone at one a.m. in the morning. Like, who's going to... So, 1 a.m. in the morning. So, he expected for Stephanie to be wake up at 1 a.m. and be like, tra tra Travis, Travis, Deandra, she just texted me. She just told me to tell you she's not going to be able to make it to your meeting today. No. And I was so happy that Jeremy said, no, you can't blame anybody but yourself. He says, but what you do need to do is you need to reach out to him, give him a call, and tell him what happened, apologize to him, and see if he will, you know be willing to meet with you again. So she does call um, Travis, and Travis is like, you know what, it's all good, it's water under the bridge, we're good, call me later, call me up some other time, and we'll set up to do it. And I'm like, that was nice. I don't know if I would have necessarily been able to do that. And again, Deandra's one of my favorites, but I just don't know if I would have been able to do that because she wasted his time the first time. So no, I just don't know if I would be that big of a person. Probably wouldn't. All right, so then we got the trip to Mexico. Now, I wasn't really 100% paying attention to this. I'm going to be honest with you. I do know that they got to Mexico, but they had to go another two hours to get to where they were going. And then also, they had, so the, the, the um, home, it has seven rooms in it, but Carrie wants them all to share a room with one another. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does make us, well, it don't really make a lot of sense. Because there's six women, and they're sharing rooms with one another. But you still, I mean, the housekeepers still have to clean those rooms. Someone has to clean them. So I, I didn't understand the whole logistics of them sharing the rooms. I was on Leanne's side with that. But I don't think Leanne should have been as vocal as she was about that. She was also vocal about, are we there yet? <laughs> now, the one thing that I did agree about her, them all being vocal about was that nasty-ass bathroom that they stopped at. I'm like, that... Shit was nasty. I would have held it so long. I'm sorry. I just would not have used that bathroom. That bathroom was fucking nasty. So they finally do make it. Um, nobody wants a room with Deandra, however, because Deandra's a hot mess. And like I said, I got the situation about the... I got everything that Leanne was saying, but I thought Leanne was just a little bit rude to Carrie. Like, this is her, her family's home, taking care of her husband's, and you're just being negative to me. I felt like she was being negative. You can disagree with me, but... <coughs> That's just how I felt. <clears throat> so then they have dinner with one another. They have dinner. And even dinner was kind of awkward because Carrie was talking about, you know, her company that she has, her jewelry line. Then she was talking about her kids and she was asking Leanne about kids. And Leanne was saying she doesn't want to have kids because she didn't have the best upbringing. And I get that. I think Leanne was just a little bit off-putting with, with that conversation with Carrie. Like, because the questions that Kara was asking, she was being very um, brass and sarcastic. 
And I was like, you could just answer the question and be like, you know, or you could say, you know what, <clears throat> Carrie, I don't 100% want to talk about that. Let's table that for another time. But you guys, that was the Real Housewives of Dallas. This video might not be long at all. Be sure to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button to know when I drop anything, and share this video, and I will see you guys later.